Hi, my name is Chad Frost. I'm a principal at Kent Frost Landscape Architecture here in Mystic, Connecticut. Uh, we specialize in doing a little bit of everything and creative spaces throughout Mystic uh, and Connecticut, really. Uh, but some of our recent projects has been the Seaport, uh, even a building at the aquarium, Coogan Farm, uh, and now we're really excited to be partners uh, and working on the Mystic River Boathouse Park. So one of the very important features of the park is actually how the land was created itself. Uh, and we found from doing some historical research that the land really wouldn't be there if it wasn't for the mill across the street. The Rossi Mill is really responsible for the development of the park and the land of the park. Uh, the mill was built between 1800s and 1900s, and uh, it was expanded over time. And it, as it expanded, so did the land. And the coal was brought in for the mill uh, through the river, dropped on the shore of the river, brought through a tunnel under Route 27, which still exists today. And uh, then it was burned and used in the mill and brought back as ash and then just dumped. And that's how the whole landform was developed over time. And so it's a really interesting dynamic to look at how that expanded over time. Hi, I'm Maggie Jones. I'm the executive director at the Denison Pequot Seapost Nature Center. We're one of the oldest nature centers in the state. We've been around since 1943, really 1946 we were opened. And in the last several years, we've had huge growth and we've actually uh, made a connection. We've worked on creating a greenway between the nature center, which is on Pequot Seapost Road, across the Pequot Seapost Valley, all the way to the Mystic River. And we did that by purchasing the Coogan Farm in 2013. And so now we have this wonderful presence right on Greenmanville Avenue, right across the street from the Mystic River Boathouse Park. And we're so excited about that, just to actually have a public park where not only the Nature Center can access the river, but also uh, the public, and we'll be able to do things with some of our programming there. The living shoreline is very exciting. I mean, I, th I think of all the things that might have happened along that section of the Mystic River, and to have the, a public park, I think, is really vital to our community. And I think that's what it's all about preserving a sense of place and a sense of community and to have the connection to the Stonington High School and children and adults, visitors to Mystic and the Mystic Seaport. It's really wonderful and this greenway of course is an important thing to me and this is, is part of a greenway. The greenway also includes the cemetery right next door a national on the National Register of Historic Places that it's undeveloped land along the river that will allow forever uh, to preserve a, a beautiful section of the Mystic River. It's right across from the Peace Sanctuary, which is also managed by the Nature Center, so the Greenway actually bridges the Mystic River right at the Boathouse Park. So it's very exciting to us, and I think there are lots of opportunities and possibilities going forward. So we started the, the park design process uh, with the town, uh, with a public charrette. And so uh, back in, I believe, September of 2017, uh, we had a public meeting and we spent a couple hours both walking around on the site as well as uh, doing some exercises within uh, Latitude 41 restaurant to try to ascertain what the public really wanted uh, for this park going forward. And what we developed was that there was a lot of things like natives, sustainable development, uh, shoreline restoration was a big one, pedestrian connectivity was a, was a high ranked item, uh, bicycle facilities, and, and things like that. Uh, coastal access obviously was probably the most important thing and, and how we provide that coastal access. So we had a great discussion with the community trying to figure out what were the, the highest priority needs uh, for the park going forward. Uh, the results of that um, was, was kind of the design, and we took all those program items and formulated how they would best fit onto the site. Uh, obviously, the boathouse was a big component. We had to figure out where it would go on the site, how it would best fit. There's a lot of constraints that govern where it can go and the size of it. And, and so we focused on where it might fit, where the parking might fit, how those two can work together, uh, and how we can make the most of the park because really at the end of the day, this is a park for the community and we were trying to maximize on the amount of space that we had available to the public uh, without letting one use dominate the other. Um, because coastal access was a really big uh, priority, uh, after some environmental uh, investigations to determine what was safe and what we needed to do for reclamation of the contaminated site, uh, it was determined our best coastal access was really a, a pier that jutted out into the water to provide uh, abundant coastal access both for fishing, for boating, uh, and for public viewing. So 
One of the big connections was the connection over to the Rossi Mill and that history and that historical connection. So the boardwalk extends from the mill down to the pier, wraps around the end, where we can really uh, view both out towards the river and then also back into the natural existing shorelines that are currently existing that were kind of our inspiration for some of the additional shoreline mitigation. The living shoreline component, which consists of oyster castles uh, as our kind of breakwater, if you will. It's a living breakwater that can rise and lower uh, with, not with tide, but with sea level change um, that can protect the slightly uh, more fragile uh, coastal marshes. And so we can extend the coastal marshes and extend the buffers and the high buffers uh, to be our protection along that coastal thing instead of things like bulkheads and stone revetments and steel retaining walls. So we can provide a soft buffer for the edge uh, that protects all of the park upland. Additionally, we have obviously the parking lot. We have to have a certain amount of functionality to it. It has to be able to provide enough spaces uh, for what we intend the use to be, both from a public perspective as well as the, the boathouse and its uses. Uh, we have to be able to get trailers in and out of there efficiently. We have Latitude 41 next door, which has its loading docks uh, right there. So we want to be able to increase or improve their access to be able to get in and out of that uh, their facility without having to back up traffic as much on Route 27. And additionally, trying to maximize uh, the, the design as well as create um, a, a better, safer environment along Route 27. We've included not only street trees along Route 27 or Greenmanville Avenue as well as pedestrian connectivity, but we've also provided parallel parking spaces, which is a little bit of a new concept along Greenmanville Avenue. However, we really feel strongly that it will really will increase or improve the safety along Route 27 because it will slow traffic down, it'll make people pay attention, uh, and it will start to provide that downtown feel a little bit further out of downtown than it currently exists to make people realize where they are and, and pay attention. So we are really excited for this project. Uh, besides professionally working on it and it being exciting and kind of a cutting edge project, we're also locals, we live right here, we live in town, we drive by Greenmanville Avenue on almost a daily basis. I look forward to being able to use this park for myself and my kids for the future, but also for this whole town. Uh, and I think this is a big turning point for Stonington and, and how far we've come to be able to, the land that was once a former dump and a coal ash to turn that into really a diamond in the rough uh, for Stonington to really be able to use this beautiful waterfront coastal property uh, is a phenomenal opportunity.